What kind of builds do you have, man? So, chat, Steve has uh, been playing a lot in the beta. He's a good player. He was an excellent StarCraft player as well. So, he's going to show us the ropes. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying, Steve? Yeah, I have about 300 hours in this game at the moment. So, I played quite a bit. Uh, I have like three or four builds I could show you. You can do CC first, Dog Rush, like Mass Dog, uh, one base Hedgehog Opener into Expand. Or just like a barracks first into uh, either bio or mech. Let's do the dog build first. Let's check that out. Okay. You are purple? I'm bomb left, yeah. Okay, got it. So first thing, just start a bob. And then uh, once you have 150 and you've queued the second bob, you want to go ahead and make a barracks. With this build, you want to make it with two bobs, power build it a little bit, um, just so you can get a lot of bobs out, a lot of dogs out as quickly as possible. Okay. Because if the other guy goes dogs, it's all about who has more. Okay. So try to just be like a, a few percentage points ahead, basically. Right. They, you can build it with like three or four bobs, but it kind of interrupts your production. Like you might have to wait a bit to be able to make an SCB or something. So I think two is kind of the sweet spot. Okay. And then, yeah, once you've got your barracks, you can go ahead and make a depot habitat. Is there any rationale for putting the depot in the back? The habitat in the back? Or is it just... Like uh, I just like to make like a depot line down there. Okay. Down at the bottom, so it's kind of like an organized base layer, I guess. Sure. And then you go ahead and make the biokinetics lab, which lets you get the dog upgrades. Do you and rally all the dogs three guys out? on gas. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Three on gas at that moment? Yeah. Right. On so when you start the bio lab, put three on gas. And you want to constantly make dogs. This is a good, like, Vanguard versus Vanguard build. Uh, like, if they try and fast expand, you can do a lot of damage to them quickly. It's very, like, aggressive. And this was kind of the meta build at the end of the uh, last phase, along with some other ones. And then once the lab finishes here you get the k10 hardware upgrade which gives your dog slow uh so if you catch the other dogs you just you can win the fight because they can't get away oh right right it staggers them when they retreat right so do you ever yeah. uh want to try to rush creeps with the dogs or are you is it more trying to control their ability to grow so when you play against a human you guys will kind of be fighting in the middle and if you get time, you want to take some creeps once you have like five or six dogs, like I'm going to do now in the middle here. But if they have slow and you get jumped on, you can just die. So you've got to be really careful. Okay. Yep. And then once you've got 75 gas, you go ahead and get the next dog, dog upgrades, which gives bonus versus light damage. And this lets you destroy other dogs, which are light units. And also SCVs for bobs. But you always want to get that second. There's no rationale for getting that first. Uh, you can't get it first. It's locked behind the other dog upgrades. You have to get them in order. Yeah, and then you just go up to three racks. As you, you kind of like, you make constant dogs and then you'll start to float at some point. And then you make the racks once you have 150. This guy has massive lances, which is good against dogs, but that's okay. And then the whole thing with this build is that you instantly kill dogs and bobs. So if they make lances, you want to just run around and target down their bobs. Because as you see here, they just they shred them really fast. So it's just like a circling run by. Whoa, they do come really fast. They pop them yeah, like balloons. Yeah, like insane. And then the lances are really good against dogs, so you don't want to fight directly. And you can just target down their bobs like this. And usually they'll try and like expand with lances, and then you can do it at both bases and try to like you know multitask. And you could almost force this, right? Is there a way the lancers can body block you out? Uh, 
It's tough, like... Yeah. You need a turret, basically. If you don't have a turret, like, it's really tough. They have to make a turret in the middle line and put a Lancer there. But, like, you can always expand as well, so if they make loads of static D, you can just expand. Yeah. Like, now I killed all his bobs, all I have to do is defend my own main, because I'm still making stuff. Uh, and I can switch into my own Lancers now, or even Exos, as I have the Bio Lab. Which, one's, which one makes more sense to you? Is it Exos, or is it... um? Lancers. If you have the gas, then definitely Exos, because okay. if you put one Exo in a turret, it's like so strong. It's crazy. The Exo now, turret's right? really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if they have like a lot, you can overcharge the bobs, which gives them extra like armor and attack damage, everything. And do you encounter situations where they can uh, out uh, out expand you, or is it pretty easy to control the game from there? So if they take their natural, they have like a lot of targets for you to hit with the dogs. So you you bounce between the two bases, and it's just so hard to protect all your bobs as the lancer player. Um, and then eventually you can expand, yeah. But you you need to get some damage done. Because the Lancers beat the dogs in a straight up five. Got it. What is your take on this map? Uh, this map's kind of interesting. It's good in Vanguard versus Vanguard because you can wall at the natural and that's this is the only map where it's like kind of viable to not just mass dog because you can wall oh. this natural ramp. Oh I see, okay, the natural ramp, excuse me. Okay, so not your main base. Yeah, I have like the three lancers on it now. Mm -hmm. Just dancing back and forth. Right. Yeah, this ramp here you can wall with like a barracks, a depot, <laughs> and a bunk uh, a turret. And that keeps the mass dogs out. But then they can also cut down the trees with the bob and try and get in the back way. But on the other maps, like it's just too open. The dogs always get in, and it's tough to deal with. So, I think a lot of people don't know that. But yeah, the bobs can remove trees, right? But they they don't need to, I, I guess, return lumber or anything like that. They just slowly cut it down and then can carve their way in there, right? Yeah, it's not for resources. It's just to open up the pathway. Could you show like, us I'm doing that? It yeah, now okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this so people can see. Because this is a lot of stuff that I think people don't actually see in the videos. So you can break the trees down like this, and then this is another attack path for your dogs if you're playing this trap. Is oh, it, you you it, do it to their Do two bobs trees. kill a tree faster than one right now in this build? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you have to balance it against the cost of not mining with the bob, but... More do kill it faster, yeah. Very cool. Do you mind showing us another build that you've you've uh, labbed out? Sure. Um, do you want to see a, good, a build that's good against Infernals or another Vanguard versus Let me Vanguard ask, chat, one? Chat, what do you guys want? Uh, Vanguard versus Infernal or another Vanguard versus Vanguard build? Macro. They want the fast expand Everyone? build. Oh, uh, fast expand? They are StarCraft players. Okay. So we can learn how to defend the rushes. <laughs> All right, Emperor, you got it. Uh... Yep, queue it up whenever, man. Or do I need to hit start too? Right. Mm, I don't think so. You're in, right? I'm in observers, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So I'll show you a one base hedgehog build. So dog out. This first. build's quite good if they. Yeah, I mean, you start with the dog. Uh, that's just given to you. Oh, I see. And you open up the uh, theorem thing here. Right. Yeah, eventually you'll want to use that, so. Yep, so you make your barracks, same as last time. Two bobs on it. Yeah. Actually, on this map, they have the little globules that give you extra luminite or ethereum, so you want to go and collect those. Okay. And then I put three on gas, which I changed to four after they return the first uh, resources. You see where my dog is? There's these little luminite globes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you pick these up, it gives you 20 Luminite. 
Okay. Which is nice. So you go and fetch all that on the map? Yeah. There's like set locations that you can learn and you can run around and pick them up. Once you get 50 gas, you throw down the mech bay and you sell your barracks. Sell the barracks? Yeah, you can salvage it and you get 100% of the cost back. And this lets you get your uh, first hedgehog out faster and your expansion out faster as well. Okay. So it's, it's worth it. it. Yeah, unless you're going to make dogs as well and go super aggro, this is like slightly more economic. Okay. And this is still fast expand, just to be clear, or is this aggro? Oh, this is aggro. This is aggro. Okay, all right. He's going aggro build. Oh, that's chat. what we did, right? <laughs> oh, I think they wanted. I think. Oh no, I, I, they said macro build. That's okay. We'll do the aggro build. Oh, I heard <laughs> so, aggro. No, 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 no. That's okay. We can, we can do the other one after this. I was just watching this. I'm like, this doesn't seem to be like a quick expand. <laughs> no worries. I wasn't clear on that. Yeah. So the good thing about this build is you get this hedgehog out super early. Okay. And the meta right now for Vanguard versus Infernal is they want to take really fast bases. And they'll do that by putting down the the farms and the turrets. Um, but if you get out a couple of hedgehogs quickly... You can actually challenge that and sometimes kill their buildings and delay their third. Okay. This so game you what picked I do is uh, against uh, Vanguard here, but I guess we could just pretend it's Infernal. I guess it doesn't. The build itself is more important. Right. Yeah. I don't think I didn't know if you can actually change it to Infer Infernal or not. Oh, okay. Um, but just pretend it's an Infernal. And then once you make the second hog and you get to 400 resources here, 400 loot knight, you go ahead and take your natural. Three on the to uh, push the speed up for the natural construction yeah okay you can do it three or four either is decent is good and then normally they would be putting up their towers here at their natural and you okay. would be harassing them with these hedgehogs and they get like a lot of value over time you can just start in and out and you're basically and just kiting here right you're just playing keep away right you never want to just stand and fight you always have to be active with these hedgehogs and they have a reload function. They can shoot three shots like this, and then they have to reload. So they're like the perfect kind of kiting unit. Uh, yeah, I guess you can't eke out more value if you spend time on top of it. So you just get your shots out micro, go macro. Right. Go go for development, come back, and spend the bullets again. Yeah, exactly. There seems to be a bit of a drift mechanic on the hedgehog, by the way. It kind of slides. Right, they kind of slide. Like a vulture, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's quite funny when you play like Mass Hedgehog versus Mass Hedgehog and they're all sliding around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so this ability, this gives the Bobs the, um, is it an armor buff? Is that correct? It's 100% increased damage and 100 armor for 30 seconds. Okay, that's really strong. It's super strong. Okay. Yeah, and then once you have your natural up and... Uh, your hogs are producing. You have to remake the barracks, which seems kind of weird. Um, but you did get 100% back on the salvage. And then that lets you put down more factories. And then you can start really messing out some units. And do you get a third factory eventually? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I mean, it depends how you want to play, like... The standard right now is to go up to two factories or three. Okay, what you're doing. And over then here. you want to add in. Yeah, I'm gonna go to three and then add in some barracks. Three is quite aggressive. That will let you get a lot of hedgehogs and be really active on the map. Two is like a little bit more passive, and you'll take your third quicker. Where's the therm? Oh, the thermite's pretty far away from your base on this map. How do you um, prioritize how many workers to get thermite on, on a map where the secondary resource is obviously so far away from the primary one? Um, it all depends what build you're doing, I guess. Like, the dog rush build and this build aren't very Ethereum heavy, so you don't need to take this that quickly, and you want to take your third base before that. Okay. 
So, like, for example, if I take my third now, then after that, I'm going to get the command center upgrade to upgrade to central command, and then I can make the refineries on Ethereum. So that's when you would take it. I I thought you destroyed the um, the lid on top of the Ethereum earlier with the dog. Did I imagine that? Was that from game one? I destroyed it. Yeah. So you can see it's uh it comes back. It's spawning now. Yeah. Oh no, the lid's the lid's gone. No, but I mean, didn't you kill that at the start of the game, or did I make that up in my head? Oh no, I I stopped because I was showing you the globules. Oh, that's right. Okay, just checking. I wanted to know if that grew back or not. How do refiners work uh, for Ethereum? You mean it's Ethereum, not Ethereum, not the not the cryptocurrency craw. Um, can you rephrase the question one more time? I'm not sure if I understand. Yeah, so here I built these scrap scrapyard on Ethereum. Uh, that's like a refinery that will let you collect the gas. Okay, so it's like the lumber mill in Warcraft Three, where you exactly. can return this resource there. Okay, so that's how you would deal with that long term, is you wouldn't have long distance mining. Got it. Right. I actually I can't I forgot that that was a feature in the game. Okay. For Infernals though, they do not have a scrapyard or lumber mill equivalent, so a lot of them will actually build a shrine there, like build the commands another command wow, center. Okay next to it uh, just to get that improved resource harvestment yep and then basically what you do is you get your third up with a decent headshot count and then you start going into barracks and you want to make lances with the upgrades their upgrades wow, uh, makes okay. them move quicker and it has increased attack speed as they get hit that's interesting. So and you're attacking you, the Lancers after you have the, the, the bulk of the Hedgehogs. Is that correct? That's right. You get like a decent Hedgehog count because if the Infernal moves out, you can kite them all the way to your base with the Hedgehogs. And you get to delay their expansion at the beginning of the game, hopefully. So you make the Hedgehogs for the map control, uh, but they can't actually fight straight up against a big Infernal army. So that's when you need to transfer like a transition into... Lancer, Hedgehog, and then eventually Vulcan Medic, which is kind of the big Death Bull Vanguard army that you want. Got it. Yeah, you have to get two upgrades for the uh, Medics eventually. Are they called Medics? I can't remember what their actual name of it was. Uh, sorry, they're, they're called Medtex. Med okay. No, no, it's okay. I do the same thing. When Artosis and me first cast a GSL, we were calling the Stalkers Dragoons, and people lost their minds. So I'm, try, I'm trying to I'm trying to catch on to the actual names of the units as quick as possible. You're sending four bobs yeah. out, right? Yep, yeah, I'm sending these bobs out to take this next gas. I'm gonna make a scrapyard here, and even before I get the CC, I'm gonna get this gas uh, just so I can get my Vulcans out quickly. Yep, and now I have the two med two med tech upgrades, the second one on the way. My Vulcans are coming out, and I'm adding in a lot of lances as kind of the meat shield of this army. What is the strategy micro-wise with the, uh, the Vulcans? Um... So what you want to do, if you look at my army, basically the hedgehogs will kind of go in the back, and then the you want to have the Vulcans and the lances at the front. Okay. And the, the kind of broken thing about this strat is the heal, the Nanoswarm heal of the Medtex on the Vulcans. So like, I just hit this one a little bit. <clears throat> Vulcans are already tanky, but when you use this Nanoswarm ability, they're tanky with like a really good AOE heal on them, and they make like a beefy front line, and they do a ton of damage. When you say AOE heal, you mean if, if there's your units adjacent to that, it heals them too? Right, yeah. Wow. And... Maybe I can show you. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Damn, there's more damage than I thought. Yeah, they're actually out healing that DPS. Yeah, so if you have two weeks units that are weak, you can get this AOE heal. 
and does they will that benefit stack from it. if you have two with AOE heal next to each other? I think it does. Jesus. But yeah, like you get this front line of Vulcans and you use Nanosome on them and put them all next to each other and they just don't die. And this will be basically any army that the Inferno has. Not yet, but when you have a lot of it uh, in the late game. So this is your ultimate kind of army comp. Except Spriggans, obviously, but Hedgehogs shoot up. I can't remember if I asked this earlier. When you, when you, um, the Vulcans have that charge that goes through the trees. Can you show us that? Uh, sure. I didn't get it yet, but I will get it now. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Chad is asking, can you mine Ethereum without a refinery? Yeah, you can. You can return it to the, um, what is this building called? The command post. So like your starting building, like your Nexus Hatchery command center. You can return it there. Okay, I'm getting the upgrade now for the Vulcans. Okay. That upgrade is actually really important on this map because if you look in the middle of the map, there's these two bases and two Ethereum mines. So basically the person who controls this, if it goes to late game, is going to have like a huge economic lead. Yeah, makes sense. I think my client's bugged. It's like, we'll not take the rally point off the Vulcan no matter what I do. I can just always see it forever. Uh... I can move it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I promise the people watching appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Just lines on top of everything. Okay. Right. And yeah, my upgrades, it's about halfway. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, almost done. No problem. And then this is kind of the general build. You want to get to three or four bases, and you have to play quite defensively with this comp, but when you get it out, it's like nothing Infernal have can beat it. I have the upgrade now, so if you look at the Vulcans, you can see them go through the trees. Okay. You can clear this out and then take these middle bases. And you need one command center to get two mines, two Luminite mines, and two Ethereum things. Would you put that, would you position two diagonally? Or do you just put it right I in the middle? You just put it straight in the middle there, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's actually, okay. I guess that's literally exactly the only thing you can do, right? Right. And that's what you need to do. Like, the value is insane. And, like, now I'm 200 supply, and 200 the supply of this army just basically doesn't die. Very cool. Can you show us the fast expand build now? Yeah, sure. Cool. GG. Thank you so much. GG. Chad is grateful. By the way, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, um, be sure to uh, like and subscribe. We're going to be doing more content like this down the road. Go to tastelessthreads.com, my merch shop. We're going to go into the next game and learn how to do what is probably going to be the most important build for you guys to know. Obviously, whatever version of the game you end up playing is going to be different from this, but I think a lot of the ideas are going to be there. For me personally, yeah, the general like, order yeah, will be the same. For me personally, this is by far the most interesting uh, part of learning an RTS. Now the game's up. Yep, joining now. This is versus oh. Infernal. Uh, you can use this versus either. Sorry, hang on. I. I, I'm oh, not... can you move to observers? Yep, I'm down there. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can use this build against both uh, races, depending on the map. Do you, do you mind if you just set it to infernals then? Your opponent? Or can you? I cannot. No. Oh. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, guys, watching. Yeah. You'll have just to have imagine. imagine. You'll have to imagine their infernals. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so for the CC first, you just make workers for a while. Okay. And like I said, in the last game, you can use your dog to run around and collect all the globules. All right, I'm going to follow the dog this time so people can see. I might have missed the globules. There's one, No, they didn't get any yet. There's one here where my dog is now. Yeah. 
If I ping the map, do you see that? Try it. If you're doing it, I don't see it. Oh, okay. Although I see the There's another spot up. here. Yeah. Pick that one up. There's no one up here by the mine. And basically, you make workers until about 55, 56 seconds, and then you send four bobs down to make the CC. Okay. Okay, I didn't find any globules here. So yeah, 45. Gonna send my four guys down. And that should line up quite nicely. I'm using the dogs on the hunt ability to see over this tree line as there's okay. a, a globule that can spawn there. It didn't this time, but wow, it's always okay. worth it to check. Okay, yeah, I think a lot of people might not realize the dog has that ability. So you expand with four? Yeah. Or three? Four. Oh, I see the fourth one. Now. And it's good to it's good to rally one more down as well. Okay. Um, because when this CC finishes, it's, if they like rush you with brutes or fiends, you want to have another bob just to be able to overcharge and defend it a little bit easier. And you don't need a depot. You don't need a habitat with this build as the CC gives you the supply you need. Okay. So as soon as that finishes and you have 150, you go ahead and make your barracks. And put I guys on this. gas. So three on gas. And you can make like a little Rex. wall. Yeah. You can choose what you want to do here. Um, in the last build, it was best to go go into hedgehogs. But it might be the case in the future that going into bio is going to be better depending on how they balance the units and stuff. So you can choose what you want to do right here. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty open-ended. I mean, there's probably a lot of different forks in the road you can follow. Exactly. This is just like a solid macro build that will go into anything, basically. And then I'm going to make a turret when the barracks finishes, just to be safe if they were, like, pushing with brutes or whatever, mm -hmm. and one lancer. Lancer, not dog. And, and, I, and I guess that your dog just is going to be monitoring for pressure? Yeah, he's just scouting, collecting globules, checking the map. I go ahead and make my mech base as soon as I have 50 gas, and you can add that to the kind of wall you're making at the natural. Bit of a sim city. Because they'll be pressuring with fiends, and then any way you can reduce the surface area or make it annoying for them to get to your bobs is good. Okay, go ahead and get my second mech bay. So this is going to develop into... Um hedgehog play right right yeah okay I'm making my two mech bays now if you wanted to go into bio you would throw down the bionetics lab and a couple more barracks probably two more and then start making uh exos and getting the upgrade for them do you have any creep routes you you take once you get these building uh, uh these units out uh, yeah, the most important camps to take are the vision camps. Uh, you want to get yours, and then you want to get your opponents if they'll let you. Um, but if you open CC first, you often don't have map control, so it can be difficult. Sometimes the Inferno will take them. But yeah, once you have Hedgehogs out, you take the map control back, and then it's your turn to... Take whatever creeps are left. And you can kind of kite these a bit so they attack you less. Okay, and then around now, you want to go ahead and take your third base. Last time I made, I made the three base to be aggressive, but I'm going to make just two this time. And get my third base down kind of ASAP. Okay, so this is probably more middle of the road macro. Like real proper development. This is very macro base, like fast CC into fast third base. This is like okay. really economic. Okay. It's about as safe as you can take a third. Do you feel like when you do a build like this, there's a point in time where you're especially weak? Uh yeah. One when the natural finishes, they'll often pressure you with brutes, okay. and they can do like a three boot push and then a five brute push, or like harass you with fiends. That's the time you're most vulnerable. But once your hedgehogs come out you're able to push all that back quite easily as they're just faster than everything. That's why we get that turret and lancer. 
So I have my third base. And now I'm going to start transitioning in the main base to uh, the end game comp I was talking about earlier. Right. And around this point in the game, like within the next minute or two, Inferno would normally do a, a push on your third base. Okay. Because, like I said, they can't let you get to that big, like, Vulcan medtech ball, because that's super strong. Right. So around now is when you're trying to power up and be ready for that push. Okay. So you're getting your Lancers. And their upgrade, their upgrade comes first before, like, the medtechs or anything. It's super important. It, Chad is asking why you took this third base versus the third base that could be at uh, close to six o'clock. Oh, uh, the six o'clock base is actually much safer. Oh, um, really? I'm not okay. playing against anyone, so I just took it okay. without thinking. But yeah, <laughs> that, that's a, a much safer one to take, but you okay. don't get the third gas as quick. Okay, so this is a higher value expansion, basically. Right. But like against an aggressive Infernal player, you would want to take that six o'clock base. I'm just kind of autopiloting as I talk, but yeah, that's the safer one. And then you have to upgrade these main CCs again to unlock the med tech upgrades. And how this would work at this point, like I said, they would do a big like kind of Gorn or Magmadon push. And once you hold that push, you go ahead and take your fourth base. Wow, and would the and generally speaking on this map, do you try to take the center to get kind of like the economic closer, or do you try to just expand to the periphery on the map? Uh, you would take the bases that are safer, uh, the six o'clock base, the base that I took as my third, um, because okay. if they make a lot of fiends or spriggans, they're gonna like spread you really thin if you're in the middle. Okay. Um, so I'm not saying it's impossible, but like it's difficult to hold all those bases. And once you get to your kind of dream army comp, you are really favored in the end game. So this is a good way to play it. Uh, obviously, since you're against a, a easy mode computer, I mean, you don't really have to make defenses. But what 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 are you? Uh, is the layout like for defensive structures? Because obviously, this is a game where you can expand you know, whenever you want, basically, without being contested. But how many uh, defensive structures are you setting up at, like, especially, like, let's take this base up here that um, uh, closer to the north or, or, you know, this new base that you took just in the south or even yeah. at your natural, honestly. So if they're playing, it depends what they're playing. If they're playing, like, really aggressive fiends and trying to, like, harass you in multiple bases and be everywhere, you want to get it like two or three exo turrets at each base and but, the exo turrets kind of shred fiends and then you want to make buildings around those turrets like i got my barracks here so oh, that where? the fiends can't get on top of them oh like oh, at the at your natural okay and at the base to the north sorry okay I'm making so like know. a little sim city here got it okay so you, you basically wall it off right and if they make spriggans you have to do this and you have to make exo turrets or you would just die um it's basically the only thing that can defend against a lot of spriggans and if they go mass fiend style you have to do this at basically every base you take and defend like that makes sense so the sentry post, sorry, there's no uh, exo in it now, right? No, not yet. Okay, I'm so I'm just making my exos now. Right, so it's a sentry, okay, so it's almost it. like it's an empty bunker. It can still attack, but once you put an exo in it, it, it transforms into a high powered defensive structure, right? Here we go. Exactly. Here comes an exo. I'll now. show you here. Look, if I just attack my barracks normally, you can see the attack is kind of lame. Yeah, what it's like 10 damage, a little bit more. Uh,. It is exactly 10 damage. <laughs> yeah. But when she put the XO in it, the damage goes up to 24. Oh my god, and it's so much faster. as well. That's yeah. it. That hits air and ground. 
and it's splash damage as well. Oh yeah, and God. yes, it hits Herring Ground. So these turrets are like the best turrets the Vanguard have at the moment. So you definitely get a bunch of those, and that will deal with any kind of Spriggans or Fiend run buys. Got it. Walled off structures cannot be repaired by Bobs. Bobs are not like smaller and can fit through, right? Uh, well, th this one can. Oh, right there. Like okay. This yeah. Yeah. So I could I could repair this. Not fast enough. And apparently. also, sometimes you want to make like some exo turrets and also a Bob turret. And then you can use it like a shield battery with photo con cannons next to it, where you'll be able to heal your turrets with the bob turret. Whoa. Okay. Do you have any builds for I... that? Is there any XO <laughs> turret rushes we can show chat or? Turret rushes? Yeah, there's turret rushes you can do. Um, we could look at a turret rush if you want. Yeah, if you, if you don't mind, I think people would really appreciate that. This is really helpful, by the way, Steve. Um, oh, good. <clears throat> Yeah, let's do one more game. I'll show you a nasty cheese you can do against both races. Yeah, please. Uh, Chad asks, do Vanguard buildings burn like Terran buildings in StarCraft 2? No. No. So this build is a kind of deviation on the dog, mass dog build we were doing earlier. Okay. So it starts with the same opening as the dogs, but then it transitions into an exo turret rush. Okay, cool. And like I showed you, the exo turrets are super broken. If you get one of those down at your opponent's natural, uh, yeah, you can just win the game. Oh, actually, can we change the map? Do you mind if yeah, I quickly not, remake? Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, go ahead. I'll leave now. Okay, it's good on this map specifically because if you look at the naturals, there's a little cliff next to them, and you can make the exo turret under that cliff and then oh, use yeah. the dog's ability for vision to see up the cliff. And you get like an you get an AOE turret on their natural super early. Got it. So if you see where my dog is now, like I can't see the cliff, but then right. you use the ability and you'll be yeah. able to hit their mineral line. Oh wow! So this is very punishing to a fast expand build. Yeah, if you're not ready for it, this is like really strong. Just one bob on barracks. Uh, you can power build it with two. Sorry, yeah. I was just showing you the cliff. Yeah, you should power no, build no it with two. Same as before. Thank you for the sub, Neanderthal. Welcome back. 37 months. Make our habitat. Same as before. And then we'd send our dogs out on the map and contest the camps. Once we have like four or five. Same as before. And so then there's 15 it, supply here. We'll get our cyber lab again and put guys on gas. Three on gas always, yep. Yep. It lines up perfectly with this build. The cool thing about this build is the bio lab gives you the dog upgrades, uh, but you also need a bio lab to make an exo. Right. So you can kind of get map control with dogs, give them no vision, and then you suddenly start building a turret of their natural and it can take them by surprise. So we get the upgrade when the biolab finishes. We can do some creeping with our dogs. Would you always start creeping with just these four dogs, or would you have started earlier? Um, it depends what's happening. Like, normally you have to fight for the map control to be able to creep. So, actually, this is earlier than usual. Okay. Like, normally they would be here with their dogs as well, or they'd be, like, brutes around. Uh, so, it depends what the opponent's doing. You just kind of have to take your opportunity when you get it. Yep, so the the thing that's different is, here is we took guys off gas before as soon as I got that second dog upgrade. But for, to make an exo, we have to leave guys on gas, obviously. Right. Uh, as they cost as they cost 25. Is Ethereum. there any merit to this uh, barracks being further into the middle of the map? Uh, it? it would get your dogs there quicker, but you also might just lose it if they, like, 
if like if you're against an infernal and they split a bunch of brutes and attack your barracks, you might not be able to hold it. Whereas mm. here you can defend it with the bobs. You have charge bobs. Right. Okay, so I'm making my exo now, and I'm sending bobs across the map to make a turret. Two bobs always. Yeah, you need the bobs to make the turret. And what I do here is I have twelve on my gas in the uh, sorry twelve on luminite in the main, and then any extra bobs I just send across the map. So I can make more turrets and make them quicker. Okay. So this is the EXO coming out. And it's the fact that the EXO can combo into the uh, into the sentry post that gives it the strength it has. And I guess the cooldown on the dog vision boost, or the scout vision boost to be exact, is is you'll never run out of it with this many dogs, right? Exactly, yeah. You can just permanently use it. And once you get him in this turret like this, you use the dog ability, you can see their mineral line. And if and these dogs uh, these exo turrets do insane splash damage. Like if you look at my dogs, like you can see oh how fast God. they kill it. It doesn't do splash on allied units, but that would do splash to their bobs or their imps and just like shred them. And you just keep making turrets down here, keep making exos. So they would then lose control of their natural, but they would still be able to mine from their main. Is is there any concern that like they would just expand maybe to twelve o'clock or something and ignore this? Do twelve o'clock? Well, if they do, you can you can start like turret pushing down. Uh, you can make like turrets at kind of intervals like this. You can stagger them towards the base. If they went for an expansion, they often won't have as many units as well as you, right? And they right. want to rely on their base defense, not just come out and fight you. So, uh, a lot of the t they usually have to contest the turrets in some way. And if they do that, you can also just bring your bobs over here and make more turrets near this base, like behind this tree line here is a good spot. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess there's just plenty of positions to kind of plant something to, to hit him later right and i mean if you deny their natural forever you could always expand yourself i guess but like two or three exo turrets are like extremely difficult to break in the early game like nothing beats them basically and there's no siege weapon that you can get in early on to to kind of deal with that right infernals currently do not have a siege weapon and the alices for the vanguard are like way too high tech to be in time to deal with this. And then once you get like some turrets here, you can even push up into that and start making more. Right. Because the exo turret range is huge. They'll like cover your new turrets that are coming up like this. Can you show how far it fires up the hill? Just so we get an idea. Like what's the limit? Uh, sure. It hits that turret easily. Oh my god. So like any work is up here again shredded. Can it shoot further than that, or is that the maximum range? Uh, let's see. I'll just put some SCVs here. It doesn't hit the furthest one away. Yeah, it doesn't hit those SCVs, the bobs that are above my turret. So uh -huh. hitting that turret is basically max range. Okay, that's pretty incredible though. Yeah, oh, that's insane range. For splash damage, and a lot yeah. of it, it's really good. That'll be interesting to see if they keep that or not. Or, yeah, or modify kind of it or honestly. Yeah, but that's basically this rush build. How do you provide vision for those turrets, uh, Oleg asks you. The dog, um, this unit, it has a vision boost. So you can... Right. I can't... What is it? X? Is X the key that does it? Z. Z. So you hit Z and it'll see up onto the high ground. It'll basically get, like balloon out its vision temporarily. Yeah, and then if you get like a full contain on them like this, you can just go ahead and take your own natural and start taking up to you know hedgehogs or whatever. Very cool, Steve. Thank you so much for for showing us all these builds. I really appreciate it. I know everybody watching does too. 
Um, can you show us, uh, or can you tell everybody where to find you on Twitch? I know you're not currently streaming right now, but maybe people can add uh, you. Sure. you. Yeah, wh what's your Twitch ID? My Twitch ID is Sturgeon UK. Can you spell uh, Sturgeon that? like the fish. Yeah, <laughs> S-T-U-R-G-E-O-N, and then UK. Sturgeon and, UK. Yeah. Okay, we'll put that in the, the description, too, for the YouTube that video. Is... Thank you so much, man. This is really exciting to kind of see what you've managed to unpack and, and figure out. And we're going to have more competitions and tournaments down the road. So this is very cool. Uh, thank it's you again, pleasure, man. Dude.